This is Kotel for another War Rights. We have a UEC for this evening. It is Schoolhouse Ridge. This is Server 2, 176 on the Server Pop, 86 on the Attacking CSA, and 90 on the Defending. We are already live, so I'm going to go through the units real quick here. On the CSA side, we have the LFL, led by uh, Mr. Arc. We have 6 Texas, led by Captain Rousseau. CQB, led by Colonel Doug. First VA led by Sergeant Connor. Let's see, we also got tw uh, two core in here. And it looks like LFL with Sergeant Crom on the battery. On the Union battery, we got the 22 VA under Ordnance Sergeant Johan, 2 USC under Cap Medi, 4th New Jersey under Captain Victor, 4th Georgia under Cor Corporal Johnny, 83rd led by Captain Edler, GC led by Harson. And the rest of the GC led by Colonel Vibar. And I also have a guest commentator with us as the unit's moving out. It is Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you'd like to introduce yourself and uh, the unit you come from. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, First Sergeant Chair from the uh, from FAO's uh, Independent Cavalry. Uh, cavalry. So we're an uh, Ohio uh, cavalry unit. Best one. Oh, very cool. And... Um, so how long have you been uh, involved in war rights? I started like the week before lockdown began in England. <laughs> so about four years now. Ah, very good, very good, very good. Uh, so as we can see, this is a schoolhouse rage. Looks like we already got some major action developing with a major push by the CSA against the Union left here. Indeed. Uh, how do you think, uh, well, let's take a look and see how the CSA attacks go here and then we'll go in for a little bit of analysis. Looks like Ooh, they're being flanked as well. Look at that. Oh. Yes, the Take 6 Texas, Texas Captain Rousseau, the Spaniards have gotten onto the flank of the Union. You heard him, he said vamonos. Oh, and I don't think the Union has seen them. They have not. No, it looks like that first unit, the 83rd, has been swallowed up. We'll see now if Colonel Vibar can hold out. He's got three flags against him. Second on the snake fence. Oh, but here comes Eddie up here on the left. Can Eddie save the day? Up. Certainly the sixth have just been caught out by that. Kill that flag. Indeed, indeed. Looks like Eddie made a pretty good move there. Looks like this has been staunch. What did you think about this initial engagement, Mr. Chair? I think uh, I think both sides actually did fairly well on that one. Uh, Confederates did rather well getting those six round the flank. Uh, I think LFL may have stalled a bit when they hit the fence line because they didn't see many go over. Uh... I think it's still got a bit to play for. It's whoever whoever decides to uh, charge out the others, I think. I think right you now. might be right. We also have some action here in the center as we rotate that. It looks like Captain Victor is fighting the first VA right over here. Up and over to the right. Up and over to the right. And he is joined by two corps. We're falling back. Just actually stay on cover here. Just stay on cover here. Seems a lot of the Union is not yet you engaged into the fights from what I can see. What do you get, what do you think of the current disposition for the Union forces, Mr. Chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, More rural, the same at it. It's... I mean, uh, not a typical schoolhouse game really does uh, hinge on the tree on the left flank, I must admit. So, sort of the relatively low numbers of Union currently occupying it. It gives me a little bit of concern for their positioning. So, I mean, admittedly, most of the time I've played it, I've played, right, I've played left flank center. So, you know, I don't know how well a right hand game goes. But it's no, certainly, but, uh, yeah. It, interestingly enough, though, now I'm spanning, turning back over here, it looks like the Union has held and the CSA is pulling off. That's, yeah, that's certainly what I'm seeing. They've, uh, they've withstand the first charge, which is always good. Gives them a chance to basically just rebuild those same positions and wait for the Confederates to do, go to it again. Yeah, no, no change him, on the battlefield from the start. Second. 
I've been looking at the ticket count. It looks like Just the Union has actually gotten a little bit ahead. How how important is morale um, state for a map like this? How do you how do you approach calculating the morale state and how to use it in this uh, particularly for this map? How do you approach it as a commander? Um, well, when I'm leading, it's Pull it back. Pull it back. Oh, well, at the end of the day, it's a skirmish game, so you want to get them uh, You want to either stay away from breaking or get them down to it. But very much, I think, morale means less, I think, on this map because of how important the left flank, uh, for the Union, left flank is, that tree. Like, whoever holds that tree sort of has command of the, the point as well as, you know, the left flank. You, you can't do much on point if you if you've got the enemy holding that tree because they're just going to hit you and hit you. Especially if if Union it, loses the tree, they're pretty close to losing the game because it's very difficult to take it back. And I think then the Confederates can sit there and just grind away the Union so until they're lie. breaking, and then they can sweep in on point. That's the game. So really, it's a question of key terrain versus a morale state, you would say. I think on this map, it really is that tree. So far, Ready, it seems the like Union is agreeing with you, and they are putting not full investment, but a good amount of investment hmm. into holding. And so far, they've been successful. Um, so, looks like we have some more engagements. I'm going to swing out to the other side of the battlefield right now. Take aim. So we've Watch got the 83rd and the 4th Georgia here. 4th Georgia under the command of the Johnny Cobb. And the 83rd under Captain Caddy. And it looks like they're facing off with hey, the 1st Virginia. Floor, we're getting hit with two. Yeah, certainly. And rally. Now, as a as a kind of cav unit yourself, um, how mm -hmm. do you approach um, distracting larger formations? So, what what kind of techniques do you like to use, and how might you well, use that on this kind of map? Uh, well, I think actually on this map, the Confederates certainly can with the trees they've got. It's very much a just don't stay in the same spot, move around. Uh, make make them guess how many I'd and like, where you're actually like shooting from. You know, get into a position, I fire off one or two rams, and then move on to your next one. Because so sort of, it's both it's hard for them to charge you out, and it's also hard for them to leave because they don't quite know where you've gone. It's very much just be annoying as possible. Be annoying as possible. That is a good one. Um, now, actually, as I rotate back out to the tree, I think we said the, C the key terrain. You see that CQB has dragged mm -hmm. off the 20th, and now we have two USC facing off against the LFL. On kind of a flank here. Um, how do you think the CSA needs to approach this situation? Yeah, the gone. I think from the position they're in, they just need to get as many guys on that on those fence lines. I think. Really, in this position, the LFL can take the chance to cross, cross to the tree, and then use that um, defense line going up to the east, and use that to just pound the second US on their flank. I mean, admittedly, it's difficult to see from here because, well, from their position, because they just don't know how many the second US are. But if that, if that's that sort of uh, eastward fence line is still is open there, I think you know you should you should grab it with both hands. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that one. If the Union's going to put so much weight onto this other side, it gives them an opportunity, I think. I, I don't think they've fully exploited it yet, possibly. We'll see. They are getting well behind on tickets, and time is going down. Uh, there is Artie on this field, though. So how um, how do you uh, like to integrate Artie into this map? Uh, I mean, this map, Union Artillery is kind of in a duff position because they are just so far away on top of the hill out on the right flank. If there is, you know, significant action in the road and on point, sort of on the road from point out to the north, onto the right flank for Union, I think then you've got to roll for artillery. But the artillery, it, it can play, it, it, you can get those years, those lucky rounds that just completely annihilate forces on the tree. Um, uh, especially far better than CSA. CSA, really, that's the big thing about the tree. The CSA artillery just cannot do anything about it, can't do much about it. I don't know, actually, there, sorry, I forget, there is another battery up there. They can do a lot about it, actually. The CSA artillery can have a re... can make life so difficult on that tree. I remember now, certainly. You've got a, a unit stacked up in the, in, in the corner next to the tree. You can lose, you know, entire regiment in one in one pop. Yeah, I see a shot's going to come out here from the GC. We'll see if we can catch it. Looks like it fell just short, unfortunately. Yeah. 
And it looks like the GC, Colonel Vibar, was able to hold off the LFL, yep. and they're going to fall back, though, so far. Even though 2 USC was hit back, the uh, German Corps was able to hold strong. Let's take a look at that yeah, CSA Artie think... as well. Yeah, I think Union's doing well on this left flank. They're holding it, they're it's doing strong. Repulse two charges now. And they're still ahead on tickets. Oh, I just missed that already shot that the CSA did. I don't know if you caught it. Right, we have, we have, we have it looks like they were targeting pretty well at that GC, like you said, on that fence. Um, I see a few CSA well, units out in the hard. woods, but not too many. Yeah, it looks like it's 1st VA and 4th Georgia Corps, from what I could see. Yeah. It's... yeah, they're... Especially this... Union regiment right out on the right. They've the whole got the no one to face at the moment. Core holds here, left face, Which makes you wonder where right exactly right. the majority of the Confederates are. The big group coming from spawn now, and one held down on the left. I think they're just too spread out. They need to bunch up a bit and really, I again hit that tree on the flank. Yeah, I, th I think it's um, these these elements here. And it was a timely intervention by 2 USC, but since then, great holds by uh, the 20th and 2 USC. And it looks like Patty has rotated the 83rd to support it as well. There's a lot of firepower now on this. I see the 5th moving in as well. Oh, yep, 5th Ohio horse is moving in as well. So now this is a very strong force here on this corner. Um, now on the other side, it looks like the CSA is putting some more troops now onto the Union right here. Looks like they're trying to split the difference between 4th New Jersey and 4th um, Georgia here. Yeah, they're driving that gap. And they... Ha yeah, back go the 4th. They've suddenly realized what's going on. That's a good reaction there by uh, Mr. Victor getting behind another set of cover. But Doug also, I agree with his move here. I don't know if you do. Um, jumping I... over the set of uh, trying to get you know deeper into the cover and charge him out. I think really he probably should have gone over the second fence because that gets him out of the line of fire of the fourth Georgia behind him. Because now he, he's now he now is very much stuck between two units. Uh, really crazy. Like the second have come up. Yeah. Well, this yeah the second has come up. Yep. And it look, now it looks like they have taken that center position now with that support hmm. from two core and SR. Um, so it looks like they did succeed in that charge, although I think you might have been right. Maybe going over that second fence would have been a better angle. But... So, so now is a dilemma here. We have Fort Georgia that's behind him. What, do you, what would you, if you were the commander of the Fort Georgia now, make for a maneuver? I mean, I think actually doing roughly what he's doing right now, maybe going into the road. No, actually, no, where, where the majority of the Confederates are, I would just sit there and pepper them from that side. If they're not going to charge you out, you know, get those get those free shots in. Yeah, and it looks like Artie's getting in some shots as, shots as well on them. And then we've got a maneuver going on for the Union who's coming up here. Behind you, Ghost! The 83rd is coming up on the left side, while 2 USC on the right. Oh no, Eddie's pulling off here. Uh-oh, 83rd's in there by itself. Uh, but the CQP have pulled out. Oh, true. They've gone down to uh, deal with the Fort Georgia, so I think you were right about Fort Georgia. That actually uh, might have just saved the 83rd there. Well, I mean, they've all pulled off to go after the 4th. Although the 83rd have been held or held off just by a few stragglers from 2 Corps. So yeah, that they've sort of been delayed in hitting back. But I will say that there is a big Confederate unit going around the left flank. Oh, there right is. Here. Yep, let's take a look Six at that Texas action. They doing the same thing. Oh, they might have uh, put too much. It might have been a nice little distraction there by the CSA. GC? I don't think GC have any idea what's going to hit them in the arse. Let's see if we can see this volley. Now, would you do a distance shot or would you try to get closer like uh, they're doing right now? Oh, so, uh, in this situation, if the enemy can't... they Quite clearly, GC haven't seen them. So I think... Oh, no, GC has seen them now. I was going to say, I, I think they turned yep. around. <laughs> they just turned around. Now now I would get out of the road. I mean, do not commit. GC is a big unit, and you can tell from here they're at least double ranked. And I think this is the end of the 6th Texas' flank there. I, I think so. They, they don't have their flag either. They dropped it back behind. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think they probably should have hopped the second fence and a bit more cover. You know, maybe avoided the spotting a little sooner. Definitely get less effective on the volley 
that came after him. Yeah, GC yeah. holds that left flank. And, GC uh, once more, showing they know how to do it. And interesting mm. enough, looks like Fort Georgia has pulled back. Hmm. So they've been pushed Good. off, but they are still a. Uh, they still have their flag, mm. so they will get respawns in. And looks like the Union is maneuvering more to the center now. Mm. Now we are at 24 minutes, and yeah. both teams are still on battle ready. Mm -hmm. This seems a uh, very slow pace. I mean, maybe I think, I'm wrong I think on that. it's. It feels a bit slow pace because I think the Confederates are sort of the man around on, on attack vectors a bit. Because they've tried twice on the, well, now three times on the left, once in the centre. The one in the centre's, you know, holding gust. But they were definitely drawn away. The 4th Georgia, by pulling out of there, they just drew away those two units off from point. Which allowed the Union to just get a few more guys in the middle. It's, uh... No, I, I'm, I'm really, in, I really am enjoying that play right now by 4th Georgia. I think they're doing a great job of... Yeah. And I think it's CQB that's chasing them, but they haven't been able to kill them. Is the they, problem? They just scared them off. Just scared off a CQB. Oh no, hang on. Sorry, that's a. Uh, I think they're cresting and volleying. Actually, wait. Everyone on the fence. Yeah, and it's 83rd's also here now as well. I guess they respond on that flag. So that's so they're over here now as well. But still, keeping CQB out of the fight, I think, is a big, uh, big plus. It's a big play. It's a big play. It's leaving LFL on uh, uh, the first Virginia vulnerable in there. They're also not. Nowhere near point right now. No, and I, I think right now the biggest problem, um, I'm curious what you think about this, is time right now. I think the CSA is running out of time. And, and can you uh, talk a little bit about how time affects how you approach strategy? I mean, well, certainly, the less time you have, the, the quicker you have to make your plans. The, the I suppose the more bold you have to be in your maneuvers. Well, certainly, yeah. So of course, when you get nearer the end of the game, you want to get you want to get as many units together at one time to hit the same point, because you want because hopefully, sort of hopefully, sort of near, especially for the attackers, but near the end of the game, the defender's going to get more and more strung out. Their their coordination's dropping, so that's the time when you need to you need to clump up and attack the same. Not necessarily all just death death stack into one position, but all move on the same target at once to sort of hit it home. And I, it's it's that tree again. It's, I think, the CSA should bring themselves back from that centre point, possibly. Or use the, use everyone, bar the two units right in the middle now, to go for that, that flank. Because right now, they're just, they're, they're caught in a crossfire still. Yeah, and second it, US it, it doesn't seem like, like they're, that. and actually speaking of, what do you think of uh, second US's uh, positioning in skirmish line here, as a uh, fellow cab skirmish guy? Well, they're they're on a reverse slope. They're just they're popping up, firing across, getting back down. LFL, what can LFL do about it? They can sit there and take the casualty, or they can pull back because they, they can't charge out that position. That's for certain. Second US will be out of there, gone, well before LFL has has time to to catch them. And I think that's what's happening with the First Virginia. Uh, no, sorry, no, two core uh, uh, and First Virginia have, have come out of that position now. Yeah. And it looks like I missed it, but over here, Fort George and 83rd have defeated the CQB somehow. I missed that attack. That, yes, yeah, same. That's. I assume there must have been. It looks like there was a charge, uh, then CQB lost it. That was. Yep, so a good job there by the Fort George who was able to string out the fight, not only distract, but uh, to win. Well, both to both units, the 83rd and the Fort George. Yeah, now I think I'm gonna, we're going to see them sort of sweep in on uh, LFL because LFL are now very alone. Because yeah. looks like First First Virginia yeah. have have left. You know, swinging back out though, looks like Six Texas really wants that tree you were talking about. I mean, that that's that's that that really is the play. Yeah, but GC Colonel Vibar is waiting for him. Uh, but I think he might be waiting just a little too far away because they've they they've got the second fence now. They've got that the corner. So that's, some, that's now a, a difficult position to shift, to shift the enemy off of. Oh, but the flag didn't go with him. Ah, now that's... So right now he's, he's not getting any respawns in. Yeah, six deckers. Now they've got now they've got the tree. Get that flag bearer behind it. And, well, uh, relatively behind it. On the fence, but, you know. Let's protect it. Now six are there. Now the six are there. They need they need help and fast before Weber, you know, makes a decision to go for them. Because they're not going to win the gun battle. I don't think. 
not with those numbers. Um, no, I, I think you're right. Although, um, so far they're standing. Um, again, with the, five, the, the five, uh, you know, second respawn, I think, makes it a lot easier for units to uh, hold positions than it used to be. Yeah. GC are moving up now. I think this is how he's going to win this fight. And I, I like the charge that he can't kind of came in cutting off their retreat and not yeah. going straight in. Oh, but and just by sitting there, they're forcing the sixth onto their bayonets now. That's That was a well executed charge. There's what, three sick Texas left? And still probably, tw you know, 15 GC at least. Yep, I mean, it looks like that help is finally coming, but I think it might be too late. Yep. Here comes Doug, now, I, now, think, I think he's gonna be maybe 10, 20 seconds too late, unfortunately. He is, but Weber's gotta turn around and see it. Oh dear, that was a good artillery round as well. Yep. Let's see, has he seen it? Oh, Jack Stone. Jack Stone, he's looking right away from him. Oh, I don't think they saw it in time. Oh, Lord. GC been caught in the road rather than behind the fence. So a nice little sneak attack there by uh, Doug. Which it wasn't in time to save the six Texas, but it looks like it still might. They've got to take out that flag, though. I mean, this is the time that you really just want to get stuck in with the bayonet. I don't think you can sit five yards away from each other with rifles. You're just going to like, waste each other's time and tickets. Well, I, I, would, I would say especially for the CQB because they don't have a flag yeah. and GC does. You can't outshoot them. Not no, even numbers. At the end of the day, it's very difficult to outshoot the GC, both because they're good shots and just how big they are. Yep, and as you can see, it looks like the tide has turned. Yep. Come on. GC completely surprised, yet they held. That's, you know. Yep. And looking at the time, 17:45. CSA still a little bit behind on tickets. Not as bad as they were, but yeah, they're still it's... well behind. And the map looks exactly as it did at the start. Well played from the Union all round. Yep, this is very solid play. It, it, it really, so far, the CSA has not found a weakness. Um, let me look at the two sides. So it is a little unbalanced right now. It's 89 on the CSA, 97 on the Union. Yeah, um, that that will play into it, I think. So that I think is is something to acknowledge at least. Mm. I think the Confederates still, but I think for most of the game, it's been GC holding this uh, left flank, Union left. I oh, really yeah, think yeah I mean, there's, there's, been, there's been several units that I think have done great plays. So, you know, like the two USC at the beginning there, the Fort Georgia, mm. dragging off the six Oh, oh so, uh, so many brilliant plays. Yeah. But I think it's... The GC alone, I still don't think is enough to, you know, if you get maybe three, get the sixth, maybe the LFL and the CQB oh, together yeah. on, on, the, on the GC on that flank. I think, I think that could probably crack them. Oh, whoop. I think you might, I think you might be right. I think that's how much you need. It, it's it's tough mm. to fight the GC one on one or even two on one. It's tough to fight. Yeah, this. certainly. But I think LFL, LFL and CQB together was they send sixth round the flank like they did before. I think that ha again has a chance of winning because really only second US saved uh, GC's arses there uh, on the, fir the first attack. Yep, I think you're right. Let's take. I'm gonna take another quick look at Artie. See if we can see some more shots. Looks like LFL is on the guns. Merci, merci. Guyana. We can uh, kill you, Kiko. Ah, no, okay. So while we're waiting for them to get the shot off, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about um, like what events and how Dirt Ohio is designed to operate and kind of what it is, you know, what is it? Uh, Cincinnati. Well, the Cincinnati Cab. We're a very loose organization of guys. I mean, we've all played together. A lot, a few of us have played together okay. for, you know, nine or four years now. Uh, it, the general idea is just, well, we run events when we want to run events. We'll, we'll, we'll join in wherever we want. If you want to play it, we'll try and find, drum up enough guys to, to play that event. So, yeah, no, no very, very lax on the out of game uh, side of things. But yeah, in game, we, we still like to be, we want to be, an informal unit, which is formal on the field. Very much so. So low stress, but high professionalism. 
Indeed, indeed. I mean, I've spent too much time poring over, uh, you know, 1860 cavalry manuals. Like, I want to, I want to do it properly, but you don't have to. You know, I think you, you sort of get the idea. It's, it's a professional unit on the field. Yep, and I have. There is a Discord link to. Um, Third Cincinnati in the uh, description, so if you're looking to uh, sign up, if you uh, heard Chair, you like what he has to say, kind of sounds kind of cool, um, you know, take a look. I'd like to point out that uh, 4th Georgia and the 83rd have, have now moved out onto the right flank, uh, quite far into Confederate territory. It looks like LFL is possibly out here to meet them, too. And the LFL get the first shot. That was a sharp volley. Uh, yeah, that's that's just ruined, I think, uh, their plans there. LFL, good counter. Uh, do both teams have a flag? I'm not sure if uh, Force still has one after that volley. Hey, oh, it looks like they do. They got one under a foot. Oh, they do. Hey, hey, behind the tree, left. well positioned. One left. Uh, so yeah, it's where you want. Uh, looks like LFL is going to pull out. West. Expecting. Fire. Hey, third. Yeah, I think okay. they both came out. They both. Took those opening shots, and now they've they've come back to better defensive positions. Yeah, I think not kind of a meeting be. engagement. No one really wanted to uh, drive that home. Now let's see, we got fourth New Jersey holding the center here, Mr. Victor. Three rounds a minute. Yeah, he's he's got uh, the first Virginia and uh, two core in the in the field in the forest to his front, keeping him busy. But I mean. At the end of the day, you can harass a unit all you want. You've, the harassment's got to benefit them in somehow, and you know, Union's on defensive here, so they're perfectly content to just sit where they are and take a couple of rounds. I think. Yeah, no, I agree, and I, I, I think so far, unfortunately, the um, the pace has just been too slow. Unfortunately, I think for the CSA, we can see we're at 12 minutes 30 remaining, and we're still not even halfway down and engaged right now. Set and US got a few flanking shots into the CQB as they move through the field. They've they've driven out they've driven out far. Yep, and then, but yep, Eddie's gonna pull back though after that shot and not get caught. Yeah, out. certainly. Mirroring. Now, GC are looking for position to face the same thing out on the far left again, but uh, have they seen the CQB? CQB have stopped. Yep, GC That's... definitely saw them, and they took a shot at yeah. Eddie. Eddie did a great job drawing their fire. Mm. It didn't look like he took too much damage either, so it has now stalled out Doug, and yeah. has given G uh, Colonel Weber time to maneuver now, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some good skirmishing play from Sentinel US there. Just, you just want to blunt, blunt that edge. I don't, I'm, I'm not looking good for the second US on this charge, but I think the GC will clear up the CQB afterwards. That no, CQB have stopped. Yep, and then like you said, here yep. comes GC. Here there comes the hammer. Wipe them out. Or they'll, or they'll break off. That's that's what they've got to do. Off they go. And we've also got the, uh, the Fifth Ohio have uh, rolled in as well. Indeed they have. Let's swing back out to the other side of the field here. It looks like Fort George right there is still harassing these elements in the field. Looks like LFL is fighting them as well. But um, yeah, really there's... not making any, you know, headway though. I mean, if anything, the Union are making the better headway. They're they're slowly rolling up the LFL into the. Uh, who's this over here? Uh, First Virginia. They're 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 squeezing them in. It's denied them a lot of that right flank. Right now. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it's de not denying them maneuver room. It's denying them terrain. Kind of getting them stuck in gunfights that really aren't beneficial to them. Yeah, they're they're on that that they're on that forest line until you know a unit 
a unit somewhere breaks, I think. I mean, yeah, at this point, if, if LFL withdraws even further, that's really just bottling them into a tight mess. Yeah, so it looks like Doug is going to try another maneuver. He's going to try to get onto the flank here of, of, of who is this, Harson? Yep, Harson. Yeah, Parson. Parson in second. There's the remnants of second. Wunderbar, company! Buy me up! Company, in two yeah. ranks to my left. Yeah, got to do, he's got to come back to three, yeah, I think. Let CQB Go. just sort of have that middle ground. Up and over. For the minute. Five well, I think, yeah, I think Doug is right. making the right move here. Yeah, I think you have to cap. You have to stop this clock, somehow. Yeah, yeah at this point, it's... Fire! Oh, but he's only, he's moved by himself is the problem. So he's going to have to, he's going to have to fight off the fourth and jersey here. Whilst being pestered by the fifth, all this time, uh, they're just giving time for eight, third, and the fourth to work their way back in. Although they are busy with LFL. Yeah, it looks like First VA has come up to support Doug and his boys, so at least he's got some support coming in. Uh oh. Hold here, hold, hold, hold. Jersey, fall back, fall back. Second now harassing this melee. No, going on in the middle, which is better as one, fourth, fourth are out, fourth pulling out. Yep, that'll be enough to cap at least. That is one cap for them, yeah. And you know, it adds, you know, you were at 8.20, now if they can hold it, that's another 11.20, you know, almost 12 minutes left more yeah. on the clock if they can hold it, so. Gives them more time. It's, 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 some, I think that was the right move. I, I, I don't know if you it's, agree or disagree, but. I think, yeah, I think it is the right move, because it's. The Union was was starting to get strung out there, sort of, with the Georgians coming out right around on the uh, uh, deep, but now they've had to pull back to the tri uh, fence line for the road. I think the big danger here is on this CSA right here. You can see we've got 5th mm. Ohio, and then who's in the river here? Oh, look at where uh, is putting his men. Yeah, he's made it. He's he's taken a deep position, but it's going to cut off uh, reinforcements. If anyone, if anyone tries to come in and help, there they've got a big volley waiting for them. Yeah, I really like this positioning by them. Um, I really think the first VA and the um, CQB need help in that center now. Or would you yeah, try another uh, flanking maneuver? I think. Now is six Texas chance to go round. If they, if they, if they can, if they can keep undetected by the GC, it's the, it's their opportunity to sort of envelop. The GC have gone very deep now. They're they're now behind CQB. I suppose it, it's a good, it is a good play, but they are uh, two USCs going in now. It looks like. Yeah, well, first it's, uh, they've just been swarmed. GC. I think GC are just about to get swarmed, which is probably going to lose them out. But it gives the fifth and second a chance. Oh, to here comes LFL has road. come up though at a very timely yeah. maneuver. Yeah, well, GC's being being engulfed by this, but the road, if they can take the road, which I don't think they can actually, so. That was a bit in vain for. Oh, yeah, CQB is holding for now, and now here we got LFL charging into the side of 5th Ohio. And if I'm looking at the tree, if we say the tree is the key here, it's wide open right now. It's wide open. This is the. I, that's what I'm saying. This is 6th Texas's chance to just lock down the flank, and suddenly this is looking a lot more like a Confederate game now. Yeah, one or two timely maneuvers can can change the whole character of the match. It, there, and there goes six Texas for the tree. That was a beautiful. They move. take that, they hold that. Union are now in a in a much worse position. They're they're strung out. They're coming back from spawn now. Got a few guys on the right uh, point. Yeah, we still got we Fort got, Georgia uh, and 83rd are really the only major. Well, no, we also got uh, who's this back here. Victor. So you got three sized units. You still got a decent amount of force here for the Union. Mm. You're all right. Six Texas has seized that terrain. Yep. And that is the breach now, I think they'll use. Yep. And now they have free reign of all of uh, Union reinforcements coming down from Sport. And now it's now it's a shooting gallery for them. A long, a long range one, certainly. But they've got the ground. They've got the cover. Second US are going to have to try and harass them, but they're not going to win a gun battle.
They can any harassment. And it looks like LFL punched into the 83rd, but now 4th New Jersey Victor's going to try to countercharge it, looks like. He's got reinforcements behind him in the form of, uh, looks like V-Bar's back in the fight. Honestly, right now it feels like it's just a uh, a matter of who can push who off. Yeah. Eddie's bringing his boys up. Casualties have even out though now, as we see. Hey, we don't have numbers for this shit. All right, so now let's like taking it from the union perspective. How would you approach this problem? Would you try to deal with the uh, tree first, or would you try to retake the point? I think they're actually in a really sticky situation. There's not a clear answer, but I think, I mean, my opinion always is the tree is the key to this map. So and you, you would just maybe keep one unit here to suppress it and, and send the majority to deal with the tree and then flank around. I think yeah. would be the play. It's, yeah, I think because the tree is a nice position that you can get to the road to point to the river back. Because if, if the Union were on the tree right now, they could probably cross and fire again flanking shots into the uh, LFL there. I oh, think that was a hell tree. of an already shot that just came in against the poor 5th uh, Ohio. I don't know if you saw that one. I didn't see that one. Uh, If I can't find uh, fifth at the moment, so I assume that was a devastating. Uh, they're in the road um, to the uh, on the far uh, to the Union right, but it's it's yeah it's been going out. So now we do have a maneuver here. What's going on? Six Texas has moved up, and they are trying to outflank uh, the part of the Union line over here. What do you think about this maneuver? Uh, it's a bold it's a bold move, but looking at it, there's no one really to threaten the tree at the moment apart from set us who are uh, heading straight for the action yep, another big arty shot just came in and i think the csa already is now really making itself felt here six texas though looks like they've uh, lost some steam they have and i don't know why the flag is retreating towards the union <laughs> yep and he's dead so the tree is now open here. It, it's it's unions. It's unions. Yeah, all the Confederate, the Confederates are in one position right now. Yeah, and without that now flag for Six Texas to respawn, it's going to be much harder now to maintain that position on the oh, tree. And there's a big rearward flank going on. Who's this? Uh, Fourth Georgia. Fourth Georgia, which Ooh. has drawn off CQB. Wow, another great uh, maneuver, I would say, by Fourth Georgia. CQB yeah. is a huge unit to take off of the. Uh, a point right now. Prob uh, the problem is Union, have, they've clumped. They don't really have a unit that they can send out around the left of uh, C uh, the LFL at the moment. Uh, they don't, but I, I think they're going to win the... Uh... Oh, wait a second. Look at what Doug's doing. He's... Uh... Is he going to... Let's see, what is he doing? Now I'm confused. He's kind of going back and forth on me. Hmm. Oh, He's gone to the river. Which... All right, charge Bennett's reload. So he's hitting 5th and 83rd, but they've got a reserve line behind them in the form of the 4th, so... Yeah, and then they're, now they're sandwiched between the two Union lines here. This, yeah, this this could be uh, this could be a very big uh, turning point for Union. Now now the 4th can just hit CQB yep. in the back. Johnny Cobb coming in to, to roll up the CQB. That flag is down. Yep, it's, it's time to roll up point, I think. There's only now it's Union only now moved. it's two versus four flags. And it looks like the Union is rolling up that point. They're a little bit behind on tickets, but they'll come back here because they, they now have the mass numbers on point. Yep, it's now now they need to drive down the road and the river and are basically just encircling crush. Uh both Virginia and LFL like they did C Q B. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what we're starting to see. Eddie's moving his men up. And the Union has retaken point with eight minutes remaining. Both teams on taking losses, about even on tickets. But although the CSA still has that bridgehead, they do not yeah. control the tree yet. 
They don't, but I think they're going to get it back with uh, Six Texas again. Six Texas, Six going Texas back to is the moving over there, but without their flag, I'm not sure how much they can stand up to a unit like GC in a stand-up that's, fight. That That's fair, but I think... Yeah, and any position now for the uh, union uh, for the CSA who can they can get flanking shots into GC, and that's, that's going to be that's going to be a big factor on what on just uh, altering what Weber must be thinking right now on how how to deal with it. Well, it will be once uh, once they start shooting. I've been hit twice by a man with a club, sir. Uh, the LF, LFL are slowly being pushed back. I think really what you should do is just send another unit into the river. They have they have the numbers to do it. To just really drive the pressure home to LFL. I think and they and they've and they've done it. Yeah, they go. Yeah, they've broken them. They're saying the rally, but I I don't know if they can. <laughs> they can try to at least save the flags if nothing else. I mean, and looking at and looking at these casualties, it, 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 I think the the union actually has two choices now. They can turtle up on point, or they can try and crack at the tree. But I think the tree is just a bit too strong at the moment. No, I I, I think I think you're right. Um, yeah, I, I think I would I would stick to kind of just shooting it out. Mm. Because um, worse comes to worse, they got to cross this open field. And again, I've got mm. four flags, you've got two. I can win a shootout against you. Mm. You know, by the yeah. time they'll get their it's flags, just, as long yes. as long as the CSA don't have enough numbers to charge out point, uh, Union Union have got this. And actually, GC is going for the flag, uh, for the tree. Now they're going around the flank. Interesting. That's a bold move, but it might pay off. I think they, they still have the casualty advantage. Yeah. I, think they I, I like the avenue work. attack of Weber. He doesn't go straight into the fence. He goes in for this corner. Certainly, the Confederates are... The Confederates are sort of split in two now. One unit going around the Union right, one on the left. Well, three on the left now, I think. Yep. I'm trying to hold the tree. Uh, although it does look like uh, Six Texas and Two Core, they're holding on. They're holding off of uh, GC right now. Uh, but holding off the GC attack on them is not going to get them the point. This is true. This is very true. Hey, Rams, how's it going? Yes. Very much. If GC can stay like a, a little oh, thorn in their don't side swear, there, it may be not the best unit to be doing it with. But it's, yeah. it's uh -oh. keeping them. Looks like Doug is in trouble here. Fort New Jersey just came up to support the uh, 83rd, and he is after pulling out. And Fort Georgia attacks into his flank. This might be it for CQB. Yeah. CQB definitely on the rope. CQB going two different directions, actually. Yeah, they've. Uh... Well, they did get their flag out, so they'll be able to reform, but for now, that Union flank is secure. Yeah, I gotta stop. Focus on the bars. Looks like Focus second US the seeing that really there's not much threat to point of of switch their shooting down to the tree as well. This 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 shows that whilst the tree is very important, road, it's not be or end all. Hold on this side of the fence. Especially not this late in the game, I must admit. No, I, I think at this point it's 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 a little bit of a false hope. I mean, you are seeing they're getting good tickets off of it, but it's in four minutes. Certainly. I don't think they'll get to breaking in four minutes. Not at this pace. No, I think also because the tree just the the tree has only been reinforced, I think, by flag spawns rather than another unit moving in. So Weber just by he's just going to get more and more respawns in because his flag's still alive. He's he's driven them back. Yeah, looks like Captain Rousseau's on the move again though, and down the. Uh... Little creek, dike. I don't know what you want to call it. Yeah, it's a stream. It's a, it's a little divot. But he he's running straight in front of those Union guns. Yep, I I don't think that's not full cover for him, and we're gonna see a bit of a turkey shoot. Although not many are going down right now, actually. That's that's true. I think it's, it was just enough, but. Yeah, second US standing the ground. I think that's a that's a good move. Oh, there was Let a friendly fire already came in and knocked out several CQB guys. Oh man, oh man. Uh, 
for him, but I don't, I don't think that's going to actually change it because, okay, they've hit 83rd, but fifth and right behind them. No, uh, Colonel Pibar, you see him rotating back to the center. I think he realized I've done enough. I've delayed him on that side. i got to make sure we don't lose point. I don't think they are because sixth there, they've just been beaten to a man. Fourth New Jersey on their flank as well. Here comes first VA is... now, though. But a little bit isolated. They're by themselves, unfortunately. It's very strung out, and they're. Although again, they got, I mean, they right got LFL behind them, but yeah, it's, it's too strung out, I think. And look how confident that JC is. Surrender. Yeah, they're running across their guns. They can get right past it, or they can stay and fight, but they can't stay and fight now. They don't have the time. They don't have the time to stay there. No, I think they'll get the Union down to breaking, but I don't think they have enough combat power to beat them. Although, who's coming up on this flank? Tukor jumped over the He's fence. Going, Lieutenant Muffin is going to try to uh, charge through the GC here. Sweep out! Sweep out! Sweep! Sweep! I like the idea, but uh, I, I think you needed a few more than five men for that. Yeah. And I think, really, even if GC were taken out by that, the fifth are right behind them. Ready to take the next... Next blow. Really, you've got all the way back to fourth and eighty third, who are who are sat well back now, just just having oh a lead. Oh, no, it's just yeah. line after line, layer after layer here. It's a good 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 defense in depth, I think. They have succeeded in bringing GC back uh, to join in with fifth, but now they're just a, a, a huge unit. Certainly. I'm not one to call it before the game's over, but... Especially, what are the 83rd doing here? With 4th? Uh, I, I think they just want to try to uh, end it. Yeah. Make sure there's no... Uh, although they did expose their flank here to see... Yeah, their flank. Best be hit. Which has blocked second sh shooting. But... CQB, CQB have just gone to help a friendly unit rather than go for the really point. Yep, and that's going to allow, looks like, 2 USC to hit him pretty hard. Mm. And Confederates breaking first. Got him. Yeah. Yep. They, they, they don't have the force to take point anymore. Yeah. It's gone. That is it. So, um, final thoughts on the match, uh, since I think we see the outcome here. Mr. Chair. Uh, I think, well, it's a very good defensive play from the Union there. I, mean, I think a very a good, aggressive uh, defensive play from 4th Georgia, I think. 4th Georgia and um, GC. GC doing very well just repulsing attack after attack. And 4th Georgia getting around those flanks and really, well, drawing LFL and CQB away from some of the major hot points. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there was that uh, imbalance. Uh, let me see if it's still there. Uh, also, uh, very so strong seven, seven men, from, not uh, too bad, but still. Uh, Sixth Texas on their flanking maneuvers. I think if they had a bit more help, I think they were they would have done quite well with those. Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, they were a little bit too strung out, and uh, you know, a lot of great individual plays by the Union. Some great ideas by the CSA, but never really mm. formulated it. To uh, to have the effects that they needed, I think they need they needed to do at least one more of those concentrated plays, and mm. maybe they could have won. Um, but they, I think they just ran out of time. I think look. very much their idea at the beginning. I think that that first attack went very very well for them. They were um, unlucky that the Union could get enough men up in time to hold it because the, the Union were looking you know a bit, a bit shaky there. I I think that probably dissuaded bring it again when really I think it could have could have done something I think you're right alright so we got one more map to go we're going to take a quick break and then uh, we'll be right back <laughs> 